So this experiment is about the demonstration of the isolation and cults of the hepatocytes. So when we talk about the hepatocytes, the hepatocytes are the cells which are obtained from the liver. So the liver could be a goat origin or from a mouse or of any origin. So we can isolate the hepatocytes either by physical method or chemical method. So the chemical method, if you want to isolate the hepatocytes from a liver, mostly we go for the perfusion technique by which we use the collagenase. Collagenase P is mostly used for the perfusion of the hepatocytes. And uh, we can also isolate the hepatocytes from humans also, mostly for human hepatocytes during the transplantation and other process, they mostly go for collagenase P. So here, today we are going to isolate the hepatocytes from the goat liver. So why we need to isolate these hepatocytes is we need to uh, find out the toxicity of any drug or we want to find out the drug metabolic activity, then we go for the isolation and culturing of the hepatocytes. So today to begin with the isolation of the hepatocytes, we need to have a sterile laminar airflow and then we require the Bunsen burner and all these are under sterile environment. The, this is the setup required for the isolation of the hepatocytes. So we have got freshly procured hepatocytes from the butcher shop and then we have got all these are sterilized. So we have got the sterile faucet buffered saline that is the PBS and we have got a sterile syringe. So to begin with first we need to sterilize the and clean the surface of the liver. So we have to completely, all these forceps are also sterilized. So we need to completely sterilize the surface of the liver so that it is completely clean. It is completely clean and it is free of any contaminations are present. So we need to surface sterilize them properly. After surface sterilizing, we need to discard the contents of the liver. We need to discard the washed PBS. Into the discarding beaker. So we need to again pour the PBS Care should be taken that we maintain the sterile environment. So these uh, sterilized, surface sterilized liver should be perfused with the PBS. So we take the PBS and then we fix the syringe and then we perfuse the liver in order to get out the hepatocytes out of the liver. So the pressure makes the hepatocytes to get out of the liver. So each and every time we need to so this procedure should be followed multiple number of times and we have to do this procedure till the color of the PBS turns wet. So this is how so So different sides of the liver should be perfused with the PBS. Okay, 
So after processing multiple number of times with the PPS, we need to take the falcon tube which is labeled as 10 minutes and we can transfer these contents of the hepatocytes into this falcon tube so care should be taken that we don't spill these hepatocyte containing solution So we already labeled it. So we have taken 12 ml of the hepatocyte containing solution. So we need a balancing tube. We have got two tubes which are containing the hepatocyte solution. We need to centrifuge these two tubes at 1500 rpm for about 10 minutes. Two tubes are placed in the centrifuge tube and then we need to set the timer for about 10 minutes. RPM. And we have to increase the RPM step by step. Till it reaches 1500 RPM. Centrifuging for 10 minutes, we need to discard the supernatant and to the pellet we need to add the PPS and resuspend the pellet. And we need to resuspend so slowly we need to resuspend the pellet so that the hepatocytes get suspended. So this is how so slowly we have to resuspend. So you can see the pellet is resuspended. 
Yes. Again, we need to centrifuge this for about 1500 for 5 minutes. Stop. After 5 minutes of centrifugation, we need to discard the supernatant. And we suspend the pellet in 1 ml of DMEM media. suspend and then we can further culture this media and then count the cell for cell viability. So, after isolating the splenocytes, now we are going to count the number of cells that are present and we are also going to see the viability of the cells. To begin with that, we are going to use the new bar chamber which is always called as a hemocytometer by which we will be able to count the number of cells that are present and also we can check the viability of the cells. So first we need to clean the surface of the new bar chamber and the cover slip with the ethanol. After cleaning the cover slip and the hemocytometer with ethanol, we need to place the cover slip on top of the hemocytometer to cover the squares that are present. This is the isolated hepatocyte. So we need to take equal volumes of the isolated hepatocyte and the triplin blue and from the mixture we need to take 10 microliters. hepatocyte and the triple blue mixture thoroughly and from this mixture we will take 10 microliters to load to, to the hemocytometer. While loading the hemocytometer, care should be taken, it does not overflow or spill out and no air bubble should be present there. And it should cover the entire area. After the sample application, we need to place the hemocytometer in the microscope. So, we need to focus the squares that are present in the hemocytometer. Here you can clearly see the squares. So, the dark blue ones are the dead cells because the cell membrane is totally ruptured. The triple blue is able to enter into the cell, so they are all colored, they are colored in blue. But the live cells are colorless because they have got a very intact cell membrane, 
so the type one blue cannot enter the cell so they are all colorless they are transparent so those are the live cells the dead cells are the dark blue ones and we need to count the cells that are present in each and every square equal volumes of cell pellet and triton blue are mixed in the ratio of 1 is to 1 and the dilution factor is 2 10 magnitude of the suspension mixture will be charged into the humocytometer and we can see we have already seen in the microscope the dead cells look dark blue color and the live cells are colorless the central portion of the hemocytometer has a depth of 0.1 mm. So this entire central part has a, of the chamber is 1 mm square. This entire area is divided into 25 small squares and each square consists of 16 smaller squares which are divided by 3 lines. So multiplying this 25 mm square into 16 gives 1 by 400 mm square. So, the correction factor 10 to the power 4 is calculated by multiplying 400 into 25, which is equal to 10 to the power of 4. This 10 to the power of 4 is con converts a 0.1 millimeter cube to 1 ml. This 1 ml is nothing but the total volume of the cell suspension. So, coming to the calculation, if the total number of cells that are counted is 48, the dilution factor is 2, which you already know, and the conversion factor is 10 to the power of 4. Putting all together, we get 48 into 2 is equal to 96 and this 96 in, into the correction factor 10 to power 4 will give the total number of cells equal to 960,000 cells present in one ml of the cell suspension.